Jewish Voice for Peace rallied outside the Democratic National Committee headquarters on November 16th. Peace vigil demanding DNC call for ceasefire in Gaza violently attacked by police. I'm sorry, the article was the 16th. The, the action was the night of the 15th, I believe. Um, Jewish Voice for Peace. This is from their website. Their newsletter announcement, Washington, D.C. police violently attacked nonviolent anti-war activists at a ceasefire vigil outside a fundraiser event held by the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee on Wednesday evening. Wielding pepper spray and pellet guns, the police rushed members of the interfaith vigil without warning, where some activists had blocked some of the doors of the Democratic DCCC's candidate event, asking politicians to call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The activists were joined by faith leaders in calling for a ceasefire to end the Israeli military's massacre of the Palestinians to facilitate a hostage exchange. That's one thing that, you know, they always say, well, what do you mean ceasefire? We have to free the hostages. Everybody advocating a ceasefire wants all the hostages free. That's part of the deal. That's part of the deal, right? right. Um, and to ensure that the humanitarian and medical aid can reach Palestinians in besieged Gaza. As hundreds of anti-war protesters assembled with 11,000 candles and signs calling for a ceasefire, 11,000 signifying the number of Palestinians who have been killed, D.C. police, many in riot gear, rushed the candlelit vigil and attacked protesters blocking some of the entrances to the doors of the DCCC. According to Jeff, Cordo, uh, Jeff Ordower, a member of Jewish Voice for Peace Action, the D.C. police rushed to protesters without warning. We've been doing actions in D.C. for decades and have never had police refuse to uh, talk to a police liaison. The vigil continued for 30 minutes with participants singing Which Side Are You On and chanting Cease Fire Now. The vigil was sponsored by If Not Now, DSA, and Jewish Voice for Peace. The Democratic Party showed us exactly how it feels about its voters, said Sumaya Awad, a member of New York City DSA. The Israeli military stormed a hospital in Gaza. Airstrikes have killed over 4,500 children and water is running out. Over 80 percent of Democratic voters are demanding a ceasefire and brought that message of peace to party leadership who responded by unleashing an incredibly violent police attack on them. So let's go to some video of how this uh, went down. We're going to go some video of the protest right now. We came out to the DNC because a number of political representatives are gathered here tonight to, uh, you know, wine and dine. And we, the people, a uh, coalition of Muslims, Jews, um, Palestinians, uh, people from all over this country, old people, young people, people with disabilities. 80% of Democrats, 66% of Americans think that it is wrong what the Netanyahu government is doing right now. They believe that endless bloodletting is not the way to go, that we need an immediate ceasefire. We need... We have over 12,000 Gazans now dead, 4,000 children, many Israelis dead, over 1,500 Israelis. It's enough with the bloodshed. And we just came here for a peaceful protest, and immediately we see something that looks more like a fascist state, honestly. Um, a massive police presence, shoving, pushing people on the ground, tear gas, when all we want is a ceasefire. All we want is peace. We came in the name of peace, and get America wants peace. So it's time for the Democratic Party to decide, are you on the side of your constituents? Are you on the side of the people of this country who believe in a ceasefire in Gaza? Or are you on the side of the warmongers? Are you on the side of the people who want to bloodlet endlessly? Thank you so much. Thank you, I sir. appreciate it. So here they are gathered. Now we're going to show the footage of the police intervention. Now, as we will find out, because there's a CNN clip that we're going to play after this, obviously the politicians called the cops in. Right. Um, and one of the things that I just want to mention here is we've seen Jewish Voice for Peace do a lot of activism in this past now almost month and a half, most notably the giant Grand Central Terminal sit in, which was totally peaceful. Right. I mean, this is not an organization that gets violent, that gets rough. The Grand Central Terminal, they all sat down, they chanted, and then they knew they were going to get arrested, a lot of them. 
And when they did, they complied. They got into the vans. We're going to make the police arrest us because right. that's how you disrupt the system and that's how you get attention. So not a violent group, uh, not a history of any sort of violent protest at all. Here they are chanting. Now, this was called a riot. Fox News has said this was a riot. This is referred to as a riot. It wasn't a riot, at least not until the cops showed up and well, started this. Well, and also, I, I sent you, there was a really interesting um, CNN segment on this that was surprisingly fair, uh, because uh, someone they were interviewing was saying that, that uh, they sprayed the police with pepper spray, and uh, CNN actually pushed back. The person was like, well, that, that hasn't been established. Yeah, and the clip we're about to play, the anchor does say at the end that they don't know where it came from. But here, let's play some of this. So they were singing, which side are you on, right in front of the main door. Now, apparently there are 11 entrances to this building, and some have claimed that there were protesters blocking all 11. That does not appear to be the case. Jewish Voice for Peace had said we had some protesters singing songs outside of some doors, but it didn't look like they had all 11 entrances blocked. It didn't look like the crowd was big enough to do all that. Right. And again, I can't confirm that, but that doesn't seem to be the case based on what we've heard from mm -hmm. JVP and what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is the cops trying to remove them from the front doors. Thrown. People are getting thrown down the stairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, this is also a lesson in why the Democrats were so hostile to the, you know, defund Tonight, the police, okay. right? Because they need them for situations like that, right? They like to call the cops, too. No, oh, right. they sure do. So now we're going to go to CNN. CNN reported on this, and they interviewed Brad Sherman, who is a congressman, Democratic congressman, who was in the building at the time. So let's hear his recounting of events. In Washington, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, turning tense. Just take a look at this. It happened outside of the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee. And it looks it like happened when the police showed up and tried to break it up. It wasn't violent until the cops tried to break it up. Coming face to face with U.S. Capitol Police and D.C. Metropolitan Police. Some members of Congress had to be evacuated from the building. California Congressman Brad Sherman posted on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, that he was one of them. And he joins me now. Congressman, thanks for joining me. Uh, can Human you tell us penis. Take a pause. Yeah, let, why don't we read that? Why don't we read his tweet there? Just because they the put building. that up very quickly. California Congressman well, let's see Brad what he said. Was just evacuated from the DNC after pro-terrorist, anti-Israel uh, protesters. Yeah, Jewish Voice for Peace, pro-terrorist, yeah. grew violent. Uh, pepper spraying police, which has not been confirmed. In fact, it's quite likely it was the other way around. Uh, um, and attempting to break into the building. No evidence that they attempted to break into the building. They were yeah, singing not, songs outside of the door. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but these types of people are not the types of people who would acquire pepper spray, much less use it. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, thankful to the police officers who stopped them and for helping me and my colleagues get out safe. Sherman posted right, on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, that Attempted he was to one break of them, into the and he building. joins me now. Congressman, thanks for joining me. Uh, can you tell us what happened when you were inside that building? Well, we were gathered together to meet candidates from all over the country uh, that will be our candidates in swing districts. Our leadership was there, but they, they most of them had left, um, and there were... Um, Many others uh, there. Uh, we heard the demonstrators outside. Uh, they disrupted us a bit. And then uh, we were told we were in lockdown and would not be allowed to leave. And then the police came in, uh, the Capitol Police, who did an outstanding job and uh, evacuated us through the basement. And you said that there were members of leadership there. Uh, which members were there? And did they leave before the protesters turned violent? The uh, protesters did not. Death. I've seen so much footage of this online we're hearing the accounts from jewish voice for peace we're seeing the video corroborate the protest did not turn violent until the police came and tried to drag them down the stairs away from the entrance and the even building. then it's not violent even they're not swinging not at the police no they're not swinging at them they're not they're they're you know <laughs> they're being dragged away right no it's not fun being dragged away by a cop so you know you're hearing some screaming some back and forth but yeah Ultimately, what was this? Uh, Clark and uh, Pete Aguilar, uh, our three top leaders, were all there. Of course, Susan Del Buene, the head of the DCCC, also one of our top leaders, was there. 
at the uh, uh, when the evacuation took place. We know that there were some arrests and the area is now open again. And Senator Schumer says there is going to be a vote uh, tonight on the stopgap spending bill. Uh, how were you able to get out and, and were you concerned at all for your safety as this was all going on? I've been doing this for 27 years. I, I don't get uh, that concerned. Uh, some other of my colleagues were, were much more concerned. Uh, we were evacuated in, uh, my in police vehicles is to the Capitol. My nickname badass Brad and then went home in the halls there. of Congress. Uh, the, the one, one fucks with Brad. Is yesterday, there were over two. Oh, this is my favorite. I almost talked over this. Sorry, I almost spoiled it. Uh, the one point I want to make is yesterday, there were over 200,000 pro-Israel demonstrators oh. with a permit, entirely peaceful. Oh. And... Here you have a demonstration less than one thousandth as large that's also getting publicity. And it's getting publicity because uh, the, their willingness to attack police, as they did with pepper spray, is a force multiplier. A, uh, a, a few demonstrators uh, willing to attack police getting uh, a fair amount of publicity, whereas the amount of publicity for 200,000 uh, de- uh, peaceful demonstrators proportionately less. Uh, and I just want to make a note here that we don't know exactly who was responsible for the pepper spray. Uh, but as we continue to report on this story, we'll, we'll learn Not more. Congressman Brad Sherman, I do thank yeah, you for joining good us. Good job tonight. doing a semi fact check uh, on that. But notice, oh, contrast this violent riot with the peaceful protest of 200,000 pro-Israel demonstrators. Um, there's another, like I said, there's a couple videos, a couple stories, should I say, not both of them are videos, a couple things going around that are very big on Twitter now, which you notice none of the YouTubers are covering because we can't, but Medea Benjamin had a run in with some Zionist participants at the March for Israel, where they said things to her that I really don't feel comfortable putting on the YouTube channel because right. the AI bot might not know that we are critiquing that, right? right? They right. will hear obscene unthinkably sick violent, threats. sick threats made at her. Um, so no, the, the protesters at the Israel march uh, were not categorically peaceful. And notice, you didn't hear well, why any don't they of cover threats that? made from the Palestine march the week prior in Washington, D.C. Has any video surfaced of uh, um, ceasefire protesters threatening you know, Zionist counter protesters, because I promise you CNN would have been all over that if that video were out there all over it. And we haven't seen it. I, hey, I've personally been to two now, filmed them. I'm honest. If I saw it, I would show it. I would show I would definitely cut that in. Right. I well, haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either time. I haven't seen it. Um, and. Look, we can't cover the Medea Benjamin thing, but they can, but they won't. Right, they won't. And, exactly. And if you had footage like that of Palestinians saying anything equivalent or Palestine protesters saying that would be everywhere. Yep. Everywhere it would be wall to wall coverage of that video. Exactly. Please clap.